how to rear a child the prefix just as children are born by ordinary sex meditation is born by extraordinary sex a child is a gift from the unknown and unknowable never consider children your possessions and condition the child into something that destroys the inner talent each child is born as a new addition of consciousness into the world who brings fresh fragrance and beauty in the world each child is intuitive and capable of attaining to its buddha leave him alone uncorrupted of any influence free the child from the priest parent and the politicians so that he can be a human being not confined into narrow boundaries of religion caste and political affiliations therefore the only way to rear a child is to leave him alone free of the parents priests and the politicians each of these debtors the child in ex Exploring the inherent talent, allow him to soar in the sky like the birds, instead of being like turkeys. It needs courage and immense love in a father, in a mother, to tell the child, "You need to be free of us. Love your children, enjoy their freedom." let them commit mistakes certainly help them to see where they have committed a mistake tell them to commit a mistake is not wrong commit as many mistakes as possible because that is the only way you will be learning more but do not repeat the same mistake again and again because that makes you stupid see truth and its realization leads to transformation truth alone in the dreams just see the point why your parents have destroyed you their wishes were good but their awareness was not good because they were not aware of you they wanted you to be happy certainly they wished you all happiness that is why they wanted you to become a rich and a respected man that is why they curbed your desires and fashioned you in a certain way gave you a character repressed many things and in place and forced you to they did whatsoever they could their wish was right they wanted you to be happy although they were never aware of what they were doing certainly they themselves had never known what happiness really is their wish was good therefore never feel angry about them they did what swever they could as per their understanding feel sorry for them but never angry at them they were helpless they were caught in a certain trap they did not know what happiness is but they had some idea that a happy person is one who has much money they worked for it their own lives and in the process they wasted their lives in earning money yet they remain with that stupid idea that money brings happiness their dreams were good and so were their wishes but they were unhappy and unaware people now be aware search for happiness find out how to be happy meditate pray and love live passionately and intensely if you have known happiness you will not be cruel to anyone no you cannot be If you have tasted anything of life you will never be destructive to anyone how can you be destructive to your own children 
If you have tasted life, you cannot be destructive to anyone at all. If you have known awareness, then that is enough. I can only give you an insight. The insight is your parents were unhappy, but you seek happiness. Your parents were unaware, but you remain aware. And these two things, awareness and happiness, are not really two things. Instead, two aspects of the same thing. Start by being aware, and you will be happy. And a happy person is always non-violent. He will be really non-violent. And always remember, children are not adults. Therefore, you cannot expect adult things from children. They are children. They have a totally different vision, a different perspective. You should not start forcing your so-called adult attitudes upon them. Allow them to remain children, because they will never be again. And once lost, everything, everybody feels nostalgia for the time. Everybody feels those days were days of paradise. Never think of disturbing them. It is naturally quite difficult for you to accept the child's vision. Remember, once you too were a child and you have lost it yourself. A child is trying to climb a tree. What will you do? You will immediately become afraid, thinking he may fall. He may break his leg, or something may go wrong, and out of your fear you rush to stop the child. And if you had known the joy to climb a tree, you would have helped so that the child could learn how to climb a tree. You would have taken him to a school where it is taught how to climb trees. You would not have stopped him. Your fear is good. It shows love that the child may fall, but to stop the child from climbing the tree is to stop the child from growing and letting him live out of fear throughout life. Such a child cannot venture anything new in life, and even if he somehow does this, he is bound to fail. There is something essential about tree climbing. If a child has never been doing it, he will remain something poor. Also, he will miss something of richness for his whole life. You have deprived him from something beautiful, and there is no other way to know about it. Later on. It will become more difficult for him to climb on the tree and to look stupid or foolish or ridiculous as well. Let him climb the tree, and if a child is afraid, help him. Go and teach him. You also climb with him. Help him learn so he does not fall. Remember, children are quick learners. And very inquisitive, satiate their inquisitiveness. And once in a while, falling from a tree is not so bad, rather than being deprived forever. If you know happiness, and if you are aware, you will be able to feel for the child how he feels. A child is jumping, dancing. Shouting and shouting, while you are reading your newspaper, and of course your stupid newspaper, and you know what is there because news remains the same, only the characters and situations change. News always remains the same, but you feel disturbed. 
there is nothing in your newspaper but you feel this too you stop the child do not shout at the child saying not to disturb daddy it seems as if daddy is doing something great reading the newspaper newspaper is the lowest kind of journalism called yellow journalism this way you stop that running energy and its flow you stop the flow and the life force that is capable of blossoming into buddha has one day. this is being one and i am not saying that a child has always to be allowed to disturb you but out of a hundred times 99 times you are unnecessarily disturbed people your so called religious showbiz complain that they cannot meditate because children are making noise dogs barking cars passing on the road blaring music someone playing tv too loud vendors passing on the street flying their trays a visitor pushing the call bell these are all they are to trigger your inner clatter disturbance and this harm it is difficult to see this you blame on the other because it is easy but you fail to recognize that you are incapable of meditation alike others child too is natural and has nothing to do with your meditation learn meditativeness from him he is so lost into what he is doing that he is unaware of his surroundings this is the beginning of meditation and if you do not disturb him those 99 times the child will understand when you understand the child the child understands you remember something children are utterly responsive when the child sees that he is never prevented then once you see i am doing something please the child will know that it is not from a parent who is constantly looking to shout at him it is from a parent who allows everything in him this is the way you live a child in the ultimate life certainly children have their own vision understanding and their ways try to understand an understanding mind will always find a deep harmony arising between him and the child it is only the stupid the unconscious and the non understanding people go on remaining close to their ideas and never look at others vision children bring freshness into the world each child is a new addition of consciousness children are fresh entries of divinity into life be respectful and understand the thing and if you are happy and alert there is no need at all to be worried about how not to commit the same mistake because out of awareness you will not commit but then you have to be totally different from your thinking consciousness will bring that difference the moment you start thinking how to help children to grow without any competitive spirit you are already on the wrong path because whatever you are going to do is going to give the child a certain treatment it may be different from the one that you receive but you are conditioning the child to all the best intentions in the world but conditioning is condition the trees go on growing without any one teaching them how to grow the animals the birds and the entire existence needs no program the very idea of programming is basically creating slavery 
the man has been creating slaves for thousands of years in different means. When people become fed up with one name, another name immediately replaces it. A few modified programs, a few changes here and there in the condition. But the, but the fundamental thing remains the same, which the parent, the older generation, want their children to be in a certain way. That is why it is titled, How to Rear a Child. It was Lars Jensen and Arista of Sweden, who after being blessed with their first baby boy, recently inquired how to rear a child. While I was planning to explain this in a few meditation sessions, it dawned to use the same question of Lars and Arista to use as the title of this book. As a result, this book is the response of Tausho Buddha to the questions of not only Lars and Arista, instead the question on the lips of many parents, how to rear a child. The text of this book was written during my two weeks of North American tour. It was hectic tour. I had to do the cooking for my niece's wedding and many such things in between. In between, whenever I had the spare time and also while waiting for the flights at different airports and in the flight, the script was written. Such situations gave me unique insights that have been incorporated in the text. When human consciousness attains to inner harmony, when human consciousness attains to inner harmony and this inner harmony merges with cosmic oneness, the pulse of cosmos, it is never disturbed by any kind of outer disturbance, such as the state of meditativeness, the ultimate of which is Buddha Hoda enlightenment. It leads to a multidimensional consciousness. One can perform many diverse functions. This book is such an experience. May you too get insights into the art and methodology how to rear a child. Your responsibility is to create difference. The contents of this book may be considered revolutionary. However, after 20 years, when their understanding changes, the contents of this book will appeal to them. This is the preface to the book entitled The Question of the Seekers, How to Rear a child with love from Tao Shri Buddha.